Should you invest in British American tobacco? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is divided into three factors: the business, the stock, and the price. There are a total of 11 metrics that make up the three factors. If you aren't familiar with the grading I use in this channel, I've made a separate video detailing everything. Pause this video anytime. The business factor answers the question, do we think this is a good business to own? Here are the six metric grades that make up the business. Here's the business grade. The stock factor answers the question, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? Here are the four metric grades that make up the stock. Here's the stock grade. The price factor answers the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? Here's the price grade and intrinsic value of the company. Finally, let's put everything together and get our final grade. Should you invest in Target? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is divided into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy. My analysis normalizes the data so that you can compare companies between sectors. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. First, let's look at the business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business asks the question, is the company a good business to own? There are six metrics that make up the business factor, from growth and efficiency to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to the business. First, growth. Growth looks at all the company's growth data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the long-term growth rate of the company. The models tell us that a growth rate of 15% is considered average. Here's our growth grade. Next, margins. Margins looks at all the company's dollar output data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the company's output generated for every dollar it keeps for further investments and so forth. The models tell us that a margin rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our margins grade. Third, operations. Operations looks at all the company's ratio data against its market price and optimizes it into a single ratio, telling us how effectively the company is running its business. Simply, is the company wasting money as it conducts business? The models tell us that an operations ratio of 12.5 is considered average. Here's our operations grade. Fourth, debt utilization. Debt utilization looks at all the debt that company has on its books and determines whether enough money is coming in to repay those liabilities, how much debt is being used to fuel the company's growth. It's optimized into a single ratio. The models tells us that a debt ratio of 0.75 is considered average. Here's our debt utilization grade. Fifth, efficiency. Efficiency looks at all the money generated from the company to see if it's using that money to grow, expand, and innovate further. It's optimized into a percentage. The models tell us that an efficiency rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our efficiency grade. Lastly, in the business factor is market dominance. Market dominance looks at various competitive data points such as market share of primary product or services, market cap, strength of competitors, and size of customer base. It's optimized into a tier ranking. The models tell us that a market dominance tier 5 is considered average. Here's our market dominance grade. To recap, here's the six metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our business grade. Let's then look at the stock. The stock factor accounts for 35% of the analysis. The stock asks the question, will the company's stock perform well enough in the future to justify an investment? 
There are four metrics that make up the stock factor, from performance to Wall Street. Each are weighted based on importance to the price. First, stock performance. Stock performance looks at how well the company's stock has done over a 1, 3, 5, and 10-year period, and then compares it with the same timeframes as its sector and that of the S&P 500. It's optimized into a single percentage to see how well the company's stock has grown. The models tells us that a performance rate of 0% is considered average. Here's our performance grade. Next are dividends. Dividends looks at how much the company is paying out to shareholders as a percentage yield, signifying a considerable and consistent income source for long-term investors. The models tells us that a dividend yield of 1.75% is considered average. Here's our dividend grade. Third, technicals. Technicals looks at all the chart data, focusing on the 50 and 200 day moving averages, along with the stock's RSI, to give us an idea of what shorter term investors see or hope for. It's optimized as a percentage. The models tells us that a technical rate of 5% is considered average. Here's our technicals grade. Lastly, in the stock factor is Wall Street. Wall Street looks at the conclusive grades other analysts have given the company. The data is optimized as a ratio that tells us the sentiment of what Wall Street thinks of the company. The models tells us that a Wall Street ratio of 3 is considered average. Here's our Wall Street grade. To recap, here's the four metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our stock grade. Let's then look at the price. The price factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price asks the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? The price factor consists of only one metric, the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value figures out the fair value price of the company using a discounted cash flow model with a leaning towards the conservative side to provide a robust margin of safety. We can answer the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? A stock price higher than the fair value price is considered overvalued. A stock lower than that is considered undervalued. The models tells us that an intrinsic value of 0% is considered fairly valued. Here's our intrinsic value and price grade. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us this final grade and its type of investment. Should you invest in Monster Beverage? Let's analyze it on growth shares. Before we begin, if you aren't familiar with the factors and metrics I use in this channel, I've made a separate video detailing everything to get you caught up. This analysis is divided into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance to intrinsic value. And because each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy, my analysis normalizes the data so that we can compare companies of different sectors. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I want to stress that this analysis is meant for long-term investors. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. Let's look at the company's business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business is the most important part of this analysis. Everything else should be secondary when it comes to investing long-term. The question we want answered is, do we think this is a good business to own? The business is made up of these six metrics, from growth, efficiency, to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to the business factor. Here are the six metric grades for the company. And when we put them together, we get the company's business grade. Now you know whether this is a good business to own or not. So let's then look at the stock. The stock is important because we want to know if investors see value in the same business. We still want a return on our investment. The question we want answered is, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? The stock is made up of these four metrics, from performance to dividends. Each are weighted based on importance to the stock factor. So here are the four metric grades for the company. 
and when we put them together, we get the company's stock grade. Now that we know the business and the stock, we want to then look at the price. The stock factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price is important because it tells us whether the company's stock price is attractive enough for us to buy in. The question we want answered is, what is the most you should pay for the company? The price is made up of only one metric, the intrinsic value, or fair value price of the company's stock. Here's the company's price grade and fair value price per share. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a Growth Shares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash growth shares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us this final grade and the type of investment it is. Should you invest in Mondelez International? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is split into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. When we've got the three factors graded, we combine them to get our final grade. Each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy. My analysis normalizes the data so that we can compare companies between sectors. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. I'll remind you that this is a long-term analysis, not something you should trade in and out of. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. Let's first look at the business. The business factor accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business asks the question, is the company a good business to own? I place the most importance on the business because it tells us everything about how the company works. Aside from the final grade, this is where you should put all your focus in this analysis. There are six metrics that make up the business factor, from growth and efficiency to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to the business. First, growth, which accounts for 30% of the business factor. Growth looks at all the company's growth data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the long-term growth rate of the company. The models tell us that a growth rate of 15% is considered average. Here's our long-term growth rate and growth grade. Next, margins, which accounts for 15%. Margins looks at all the company's dollar output data and optimizes it into a single percentage, giving us the company's output generated for every dollar it keeps for further investments and so forth. The models tells us that a margin rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our margin rate and margins grade. Third, operations, which accounts for 10%. Operations looks at all the company's ratio data against its market price and optimizes it into a single ratio, telling us how effectively the company is running its business. Simply, is the company wasting money as it conducts business? The models tell us that an operations ratio of 12.5 is considered average. Here's our operations ratio and operations grade. Fourth, debt utilization, which accounts for 10%. Debt utilization looks at all the debt that a company has on its books and determines whether enough money is coming in to repay those liabilities. How much debt is being used to fuel the company's growth? It's optimized into a single ratio. The models tell us that a debt ratio of 0.75 is considered average. Here's our debt ratio and debt utilization grade. Fifth, efficiency, which accounts for 10%. Efficiency looks at all the money generated from the company to see if it's using that money to grow, expand, and innovate further. It's optimized into a percentage. The models tells us that an efficiency rate of 10% is considered average. Here's our efficiency rate and efficiency grade. Lastly in the business factor is market dominance, which accounts for 25%. Market dominance looks at various competitive data points such as market share or primary product or services market cap, strength, or competitors, and size of customer base. It's optimized into a tier ranking. The models tells us that a market dominance tier 5 is considered average. Here's our tier number and market dominance grade. To recap, here's the six metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our business grade. Let's then look at the stock. 
The stock factor accounts for 35% of the analysis. The stock asks the question, will the company's stock perform well enough in the future to justify an investment? I place this much importance on the stock because we still want to hold an asset that grows over the long run, and a good history of stock growth and a good entry is key to long-term success. There are four metrics that make up the stock factor, from performance to Wall Street. Each are weighted based on importance to the price. First, stock performance, which accounts for 30% of the stock factor. Performance looks at how well the company's stock has done over a 1, 3, 5, and 10-year period, if applicable, and then compares it with the same timeframes as its sectors and that of the S&P 500. It's optimized into a percentage to see how well the company's stock has grown. The models tell us that a performance rate of 0% is considered average. Here's our performance rate and performance grade. Next are dividends, which accounts for 30%. Dividends looks at how much the company is paying out to shareholders as a percentage yield, signifying a considerate and consistent income source for long-term investors. The models tells us that a dividend yield of 1.75% is considered average. Here's our dividend yield and dividends grade. Third, technicals, which accounts for 20%. Technicals looks at all the chart data focusing on the 50 and 200-day moving averages, along with the stock's RSI to give us an idea of what shorter-term investors see or hope for. It's optimized as a percentage. The models tells us that a technical rate of 5% is considered average. Here's our technical rate and technical grade. Lastly in the stock factor is Wall Street, which accounts for 20%. Wall Street looks at the conclusive grades other analysts have given the company. The data is optimized as a ratio that tells us the sentiment of what Wall Street thinks of the company. The models tells us that a Wall Street ratio of 3 is considered average. Here's our Wall Street ratio and Wall Street grade. To recap, here's the four metric grades. And when we put them together, we get our stock grade. Let's then look at the price. The price factor accounts for 20% of the analysis. The price asks the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? I place the least importance on price because you should prioritize the business and stock before looking at the price per share. The price will tell us when to invest, but not why you should invest. The price factor only consists of one metric, the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value figures out the fair value price of the company, using a discounted cash flow model with a leaning towards the conservative side to provide a robust margin of safety. We can answer the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? A stock price higher than the fair value price is considered overvalued, a stock lower than that is considered undervalued. The models tell us that an intrinsic value of 0% is considered fairly valued. Here's our intrinsic value and price grade. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we can get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us this final grade and its type of investment. Should you invest in the Altria Group? Let's analyze it on growth shares. This analysis is split into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. Each company belongs to a specific sector of the economy. My analysis cleans the data so that we can compare companies between different sectors effortlessly. The three factors are then graded and combined to get our final grade. Most companies will fall into that average range, since most companies are indeed average long-term investments. Before we begin, there will be quite a few numbers and metrics in this video, so I've made a separate video detailing everything to get you caught up. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. First, let's look at the company's business factor, which accounts for 45% of the analysis. The business is the most important part of this analysis. Everything else should be secondary when it comes to investing long term. This factor basically asks the questions, do we think this is a good business to own? The business is made up of these six metrics, from growth, efficiency, to market dominance. Each are weighted based on importance to this factor. And when we analyze them, we get their metric grades. When we put them together, we get the company's business grade. 
Next, let's look at the company's stock factor, which accounts for 35% of its analysis. The stock is important because we want to know if investors see value in the same business. We still want a return on our investment. This factor basically asks the question, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? The stock is made up of these four metrics, from performance to dividends. Each are weighted based on the importance to this factor. And when we analyze them, we get their metric grades. When we put them together, we get the company's stock grade. Third, let's look at the company's price factor, which accounts for 20% of this analysis. The price is important because it tells us whether the company's stock price is attractive enough for us to buy in. This factor basically asks the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? The price is made up of only one metric, the intrinsic value, or fair value price of the company. Here's the company's price grade and intrinsic value per share. Before we calculate our final grade, consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us its final grade and its type of investment. Should you invest in Colgate Palmolive? Let's analyze it on GrowthShares. This analysis is split into three factors, the business, the stock, and the price. Within each factor are a total of 11 metrics from business growth, performance, to intrinsic value. Each of the three factors and 11 metrics are given a grade from 0 to 99, with 50 to 59 being considered average. The three factors are then graded and combined to get our final grade. Before we begin, there will be quite a few numbers and metrics in this video, so I've made a separate video detailing everything to get you caught up. I encourage you to pause this video anytime so you can better understand the numbers. Consider becoming a GrowthShares Patreon member and get access to my spreadsheet with every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash GrowthShares or click on the link in the description. First, let's look at the company's business factor, which accounts for 45% of the analysis. This factor basically asks the questions, do we think this is a good business to own? The business is made up of these six metrics and they're given grades. When we put them together, we get the company's business grade. Next, let's look at the company's stock factor, which accounts for 35%. This factor basically asks the question, will the stock grow enough in the future to justify an investment? The stock is made up of these four metrics and they're given grades. When we put them together, we get the company's stock grade. Third, let's look at the company's price factor, which accounts for 20%. This factor basically asks the question, what is the most you should pay for the company? Here's the company's price grade and intrinsic value per share. By combining the business, the stock, and the price, we get the overall outlook of the company, which gives us its final grade and its type of investment. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Invest wisely, and as always, take care of your money.